welcome back to Five Rounds. Joining us now, our friend, Dr. David Klonsky, to talk about mental aspects of mixed martial arts. I think people just assume that, well, you know, you train physical, you train mental, but uh, it's kind of, that's a broad term. Uh, can you break it down for us uh, in layman's terms for us people that maybe not understand uh, at your level? Uh, what does the mental game really mean? Well, first of all, it's great to be back. Longtime fan of the show. Uh, and you're right, when it comes to the physical game, people get there are multiple aspects. You know, if you would never ask a coach, hey, can you help me with my physical game? You'd say, can you help me with my you know, explosiveness, my conditioning, my endurance, my footwork? Boxing, yes, whatever. Exactly, boxing, grappling, takedown defense. Uh, when it comes to the mental game, a lot of people will say, hey, I get the mental game is important. Can you help me improve it? And the question sort of implies that it's one thing. And it's many different parts, and so I'm glad we have an opportunity today to talk about that. Yeah, let's take a look at what some of them are. You know, we've taken, you've brought us five different topics, five different aspects of the mental game that guys can work on and need to work on. What are some of them? Uh, first, I think, would be emotional readiness. And I think this is what people often think about when they uh, think about the mental game. And that is, when the fight begins, are your emotions supporting your performance at a high level, or are they getting in the way? Are you being hampered by fear, by doubt, by anxiety? And so, you know, that, that for me is what emotional readiness entails. Isn't that uh, a, a something that affects most fighters? They're all, you know, they feel, you know, I'm stepping inside of the cage. I'm running. There's, there's a risk that I'm going to leave this cage, win or lose, injured. So obviously that is something that most people will go through. For sure. Some fighters seem born ready. We were talking yeah. earlier how, you know, you look at Nick Diaz, you look at Diego Sanchez, they look like they're, they're, they're ready to fight. Emotional readiness does not appear to be a problem. There are other fighters, champions, who have George talked- Saint-Pierre. George Saint-Pierre, Randy Couture, both of them have, have talked at length about struggling with this, feeling terrified beforehand. And they became good at emotional readiness, not because they were born with it. Uh, we don't have time to get into some of the techniques they use, but there's a technique called radical acceptance yeah. that Randy Couture used about how he would fully accept and embrace that mm -hmm. he might lose, he might lose by knockout. And once he made peace with that, he could go ahead fearlessly. Uh, GSP is a technique called power posing. You've actually done, yeah. uh, uh, you've covered that in your show before. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's interesting because people, you can train those things. You do, there are technical ways to train these aspects of the game and uh, improve them. And experience itself in some cases uh, does. But it's also interesting, we were talking about it, some guys use it offensively where Nick Diaz mm -hmm. or Conor McGregor will actually use their own emotional readiness to kind of interrupt yours or create fears and doubts so they actually reverse it. It's a fascinating aspect of it. Um, is this something that uh, when you go to, to develop your mental game, does an athlete have to understand where they need work or is it just they have to talk to somebody and deconstruct where, where, what areas they need to work on? Yeah, give us an example. What's the next, the second one and give us an example? Well, game planning might be a next, the next one to talk about and that is do you have the ability to uh, learn a specific game plan, to practice it, to perfect it, and then to actually implement it in the fight itself. It requires intelligence, it requires attention to detail, both when preparing to fight and actually stepping into right. fight. And there are guys who are amazing at this and there are guys who are not amazing at this and it often makes all the difference in a fight. But like to John's question, what can, for this one specifically, mm -hmm. coaching seems to play a huge part in it. Coaching absolutely does. And part of what you need for game planning is humility in a sense that you don't have all the answers your current repertoire is not necessarily perfectly geared for the next guy and so will you be open to that coaching will you be receptive will you take it in and and uh, I think maybe the place we saw this, uh, that's sort of the quintessential example, is we saw Nick Diaz against Carlos Condit. Yeah. Nick Diaz is not much of a game planner. Carlos Condit it can be the quintessential game planner. Without a game plan, those guys, uh, the fight might be different. Carlos Condit had a perfect game plan, implemented it well, and won that fight. Mm -hmm. What about some of the athletes that uh, just are, their, their goal is, I listen to my coach, I trust 100% in this guy, in, in the people that I surround myself with, and I'm just gonna keep moving forward. I don't let anything else affect me, even if the game plan isn't working. Well, that gets into, you know, there are a lot of mental skills, and we're not gonna to get to talk about all, a lot of them today. Uh, one of them is responding to adversity. What happens if you step in, you're mentally prepared, you got the game plan, mm -hmm. you've been training well, things don't go your way. How do you respond to that? Yeah, Phil Davis, if he doesn't get that first takedown, this fight is an entirely different thing. How is he gonna deal yeah. with that? You know, he goes in, he shoots that takedown, if he gets it, his confidence rises, he performs well. If he doesn't uh, get that, that's your third topic there. How does he respond to that? 
Right, right, exactly. And a lot can go into that. Uh, you know, GSP said something I found fascinating recently, where uh, against Carlos Condit, he ate a head kick late, uh, oh, yeah. somewhat late in the fight, even though he was controlling things up to that point. And he said that his experience against uh, Sarah years earlier, where he got rocked and then beat, helped prepare him to get rocked in this fight and, and, and see it through and respond better to the adversity and, and come back and finish that fight. Amazing. And you've got two other topics, right? Two other ones that we're going to look at today. Well, there's also just how does a fighter train in general? You know, let's say you don't have an opponent. How do you, uh, do you have the intelligence and the attention to detail and really the humility to own up to your weaknesses and be coachable? Can you be a good student? And when you are, you continually improve yourself. You evolve. We see new dimensions, new techniques. I think TJ Dillashaw is a great poster child for this. Mm -hmm. He put himself in the hands of, of Coach Ludwig and came out shining with this beautiful high-level striking, perfect technique, the timing, putting it all together, and that can make all the difference. It uh, seems that uh, the most successful people will have kind of a combination of all those things, but is it possible sure. to achieve greatness with only one of those things, or maybe none? People can get to a pretty high level, and I think some, you know, some fighters that we've talked about, you know, uh, Nick Diaz is a great example. He shines at some of these. He's not so great at the others. He's made it almost to the top. Would he have made it all to the top if he had some of these other mental domains? You know, uh, hard to say. If we touch on the last one, what's, what's number five, and who's good at that one? Well, we've talked about this as instinct or flow, and this right. is, you know, when the fight gets going, you, don't, you want to do the right technique at the right time without thinking about it. Uh, you know, a great example of that's Carlos Condit, and you did a great breakdown that I think roughly a year ago on that. Uh, Robbie Lawler against Rory McDonald, I think, is a nice uh, way to demonstrate this because at, Robbie Lawler had to, came in that fight with a ton of experience, more than, than uh, McDonald, and was flowing, doing everything right. McDonald is probably a future champion, but he still he thinks a lot. Uh, he's not, he doesn't quite flow with his techniques as much, and that may have been the difference in that fight. But boy, is Rory McDonald getting better. Coming up, we reveal some of the fighters on the UFC roster. We feel embody all these mental qualities and have the best mental game when they step into the octagon. When five rounds on FN continues.